Rachel Bomberger with Erdman's Publishing. I'm here with Johnny Bernard Hill, who is author of Prophetic Rage, A Post-Colonial Theology of Liberation. Welcome, Johnny. It's so good to have you. It's a pleasure to be here, Rachel. Tell us about your book. This is such a it's powerful book. Mm -hmm. What led you to write it? Well, I'm, I'm very excited about Prophetic Rage. Uh, it was released in December of 2013 really on the backdrop of two amazing presidential races, President Obama's election in 2008 and then again in 2012. And what led to the, the research for the book was part of a larger research project that I've been working on for pretty much most of my career, uh, which is around civil and human rights and looking at the theology uh, of the civil rights movement as a resource for thinking about um, a constructive vision for how Christians, not just Christians, but also the general public should think about questions of justice, uh, inclusivity, uh, race, reconciliation, uh, and a myriad of other forms of, of liberation theologies that includes um, the experiences of Hispanic women, Muharista theologies, or whether it's Minjung theology coming from South Korea, or womanist theology, or black theology, or Latin American liberation theology. So I was looking for sort of a theme that connects all of these different traditions of liberation theology that is a part of a larger conversation around civil and human rights in local communities as well as a, across the world. Mm -hmm. So that's what led to the, the, um, the writing and the publication of the book and my hope is that it will be a resource for, for activists, for scholars, for theologians and for people who are thinking critically about the work of liberation and, and justice and reconciliation in this time. Mm. Your book has an we don't get to use this word very much, but your book has been called a manifesto mm. of sorts. Um, what is the challenge at the heart of it? Well, the challenge of prophetic rage is really connecting both theology and theory and praxis. So the struggle for most um, the theologians who think about these issues critically is what does it mean ultimately for the, the, uh, the plight of people who are suffering around the world? So when I say um, this, the sort of, when I think about this whole notion of prophetic rage, I'm thinking about the urgency of, of, of attending to the question of human suffering, but also looking deeply at the history of the ideas that have formed a basis for action around these issues as well. So prophetic rage, I think, is a manifesto. It, it's a call to action. It's a call to, um, to a response to the critical issues of our time. It's also a call to, to think critically and deeply about the theological traditions that have shaped us in a way that lends itself to the urgency of attending to problems of human suf suffering in this time. Mm -hmm. So it's sort of saying, look, we have to look at the tradition. We have to look at um, the, um, the sort of tradition of theological reflection that we have inherited from the sort of Western theological discourse. Take it seriously, but also look at where we are in the world today as well. So we can't just sort of let our theology sit on the shelf. It also has to have meaning um, for those who are suffering in the present moment. Yeah, so. I mean this this is certainly a, a broken old world that mm -hmm. is still just the, the subject of so much violence and, and so many scars. I think as Christians, we are often uncomfortable with the idea of being angry. Mm -hmm. But I think you see a real... Oh no, I think anger is great. I yeah. think like, I think righteous ang anger, and that's mm -hmm. what I try to sort of lift up in prophetic rage, is we're talking about righteous indignation. We're talking about being uneasy with uh, suffering. Mm -hmm. uh, King talked about, Martin Luther King, talked about being a non-conformed non um, conformist. So to not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you can actually help change the world. So really what prophetic rage represents is uh, a way of, of Christians, believers, people of faith in general embracing um, their sense of, of angst and uh, indignation at the present social order. So it's sort of uh, affirming the urgency of, of uh, being uh, sort of discontent with what's happening in the world and then going out and actually um, engaging in prophetic, uh, meaningful, justice-seeking, life-giving actions in the world. Mm -hmm. Yeah, godliness with contentment and yet if things don't, des if the world doesn't deserve our contentment, then righteous indignation. Right, I mean if you look around like what the, one of the big problems in the Christian church in the, West, in the Western world in general, both in 
in Northern Europe as well as in America is we're seeing amazingly declining numbers yes. in mainline uh, denominations. And part of that is because people are struggling, struggling with meaning. They're struggling with that sense of, of hopelessness and despair uh, or, or what some scholars call that sort of nihilistic impulse. And so what prophetic rage does is it, it attempts to address the culture of meaningless and meaning, meaninglessness and despair and hopelessness that we see sort of running rampant both in the church and in mainstream society by saying, embrace your righteous indignation, mm -hmm. embrace that sense of, of um, uneasiness when it comes to the, the sort of, sort of cur current context of injustice um, and, and celebrate that, that, that sense of, of indignation as a way of, 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 of moving toward action. Yeah, I think in the book you highlight ways in which um, Black theology in particular has something really important to say in this conversation. What about black religion and theology can really teach us how to deal with these challenges? Thank, thank you for that question. Um, what Prophetic Rage tries to do is to say first, we have a serious problem in our culture today, in our context, and race, uh, economic exploitation, uh, violence toward uh, women and children, all of that's connected to this sort of culture of meaninglessness and hopelessness and despair that we're seeing. So we're facing a problem of meaninglessness. We're facing a problem of, of nihilism, both across West, the, the Western world as well as in, in America. And violence is one of the chief sort of manifestations or, or uh, iterations of how, what it looks like. So what prophetic rage tries to say in very simple terms is that the black religious tradition and the tradition of black freedom fighters has been sort of a basis for confronting meaninglessness. So who confronted meaninglessness probably more than any other community uh, in, in, a, in American society uh, than enslaved Africans in their fight and their struggle for meaning, for hope, for dignity in the face of enslavement as well as reconstruction and of course up into the present moment dealing with sort of racialized violence mm -hmm. and that sort of thing. So my, my hope is that readers will understand that if you look at the black religious tradition, you will gain or glean resources for looking at broader questions of meaninglessness and hopelessness in a variety, variety of different theological traditions, but also in different walks of life as well. So we all face questions around meaninglessness and hopelessness. The black prophetic tradition, the black religious tradition, provides resources, not just for the African American community, but for larger, the larger society mm -hmm. in thinking critically about how to, um, to uh, address that sort of culture of, of meaninglessness, but also the urgency of dealing with human suffering that comes as a result of, or as sort of an, an, an expression of that meaning, meaninglessness and despair. Your book it ranges very broadly. You draw, I mean, it's theology, but you also bring in art and literature and everybody from Jesus to Malcolm X to Barack mm -hmm. Obama. Mm -hmm. What did you gain from this very interdisciplinary approach in tackling the subject? Well, I think that's the best of theology. I think the best of theology is recognizing that God is at work in all dimensions of human life. So God is not just simply at work in the traditional sort of spaces of theological reflection and theological discourse. God is also at work in art, in music, in literature, in multiple forms of human expression. And so if you look at the ways in which human beings express themselves and think about what it means to exist in the world becomes resources to glean out um, theological reflection. So I draw on the Harlem Renaissance. I try to sort of speak to the ways in which human beings have sort of struggled with not just sort of uh, artistic expression, but also in, in music and in, in literature. I mean, we're celebrating the anniversary of James Baldwin mm -hmm. and, and his sort of, you know, just magisterial works that have uh, given all of us inspiration in thinking about not just race, but also just forms of difference, whether it has to do with gender or, or sexual orientation or race or you know a, a number of different forms of, of difference that we have to, to struggle with. And I think the, the great thing about art and, and music and literature is that it's sort of, uh, it, it creates a space to have, to clean out multiple forms of, of meaning in that process. Now your book is um, not a standalone volume, I mean, it is, but it's part of this prophetic Christianity mm -hmm. series. What did it mean for you f to be part of this series, and, and why were you excited 
to join these other scholars in, in this series? Well, I, I really think that the Prophetic Christianity series is, is, is not just a, a, a book series. It's actually a movement. It's actually part of a larger conversation that's been happening among churches across the nation and really around the world that says, what does our faith mean uh, in light of uh, the forces of injustice and human suffering that exist today? So what I see in the Prophetic Christianity series is not just a series of books, which is great for research, for uh, the libraries, for uh, teaching, but I see it as a resource for, for uh, building a movement around the urgency of making the Christian faith meaningful in our time. Johnny, thank you so much for talking with it's us today. My pleasure. Again, the book is Prophetic Rage, A Postcolonial Theology of Liberation. Johnny Bernard Hill.